We've all got those neglected shady areas in our gardens that aren't being used as much as they should be, whether it's under a tree, along a fence or beside the house, or even in a courtyard or balcony where you're surrounded by the shadows of buildings. Whatever challenges you're facing, I've got the perfect plant to bring life and colour into those shady spots. Before we get started, it's worth considering how much shade is actually shade? Shady sites can change so much during the year and even just during the day. So observe how the sun and shadows move across your garden. When we say part or semi-shade, that means either less than four hours of direct sun or in dappled shade all day. Part sun could also be morning sun or afternoon sun and that makes a big difference. Morning is much less intense than the afternoon. So if an area is getting half a day of just hot western sun, don't go for shade loving plants. Full shade is no direct sun at all. As well as how much shade is shade, there are also different kinds of shade. Let's start with cool shade. In areas where the sun doesn't get direct, like on a balcony sheltered with concrete walls, it can also get quite cold. So it's worth looking for plants that thrive in cool climates. Heucheras are low growing perennials that come in a huge range of colours, like this golden yellow, bright green and deep purples too. The small mounds of colourful foliage are great as understory plants or in hanging baskets and vertical gardens. They need morning or dappled light for best colour, but there are new cultivars that suit a range of lighting conditions. When in pots, they like to be kept moist in a well-drained mix. In fuller shade, hostas can be a real winner. Their bold structural foliage is often used in formal borders, but they're equally stunning as a mass planting or a feature on their own. Some are naturally variegated with bright patches of green or white. They're frost tolerant and can go dormant during winter, so it's a good idea to pair them with something evergreen. It's always worth keeping an eye out for slugs and snails. Next, dry shade. Sites like under the eaves of a house, a dense canopy, or sheltered by walls on more than one side can often be shady and devoid of any natural rainfall. Of course, you can water these areas more often and add lots of organic matter to increase the water retention. But choosing drought tolerant species will help with this a lot. Whilst they're forest dwellers, many bromeliads are great for dry shade. That's because they hate having wet feet. Instead, you can water every so often into the cups of their leaves. A mass planting of different colors can bring a tropical look much further south in a sheltered spot. Clivias are an old favourite. You may know the traditional orange coloured ones, but they actually come in a lot of different colours and leaf forms too. And they are bomb proof, perfect for planting under trees. And you can see the soil here is quite compacted, so they can take a lot of tough love. Fatsia japonica seems like a moisture loving tropical plant and does well indoors, but it also does surprisingly well in cool climates with dry periods. It can become a large shrub when planted in the ground though, and spreads by suckers, so best to keep it contained. Sometimes, wind can be the cause of a dry spot too, like the wind tunnel down the side of a house. In that case, look to shade-loving, tough plants like the vibrant Kalanchoe flapjacks. What about warm shade? If you have a warm temperate to tropical climate and a sheltered site, then you can grow a lot of indoor plants outdoors. Things like Calathea, Aglaonema and Tenanthe are great. Try a different mix of species, patterns and colours to create an exciting year-round display. Alternatively, there aren't many plants as richly coloured and easy to grow as the big-leaved Cordyline fruticosa cultivars, which like full sun to part shade, or coleus, which needs a minimum of part shade but likes to stay moist. But what if you garden in pots? Well, I've got a great solution that'll work there just as well. Tricky spots call for smart solutions, and that's why pots are great for having more control over those shady areas. I've chosen this beautiful pot, which I think is going to suit the tones of the plants I'm going to use. 
My feature plant is this amazing Alcantaria, also known as the giant bromeliad. I love it for these strappy green leaves that have a rich burgundy underside. Bromeliads love a moist but well-drained mix, so I've combined premium potting mix with chunky orchid bark. I've chosen these sucuras, which will complement the colours of the Alcantaria. They're also shade loving too. This one's a slightly different colour. It's got more gold tones through it. Creeping figs have a really dense growth habit, so they're great for placing on the edge of garden beds or on pots too. If you find the creeping fig gets too big, simply cut it back. Now I'm just backfilling all the pockets to ensure all the roots are well covered. Once you've finished, always water in well. The good thing about pots is that you can easily move them around, especially if the shade changes throughout the seasons or if you move house. So you can see that the right plants matched with the right kind of shade can really pump some colour and drama into those neglected spots in your garden.